Well, as uh, Stephen just said, we've got actually 16. I think I was saying 14, but 16 in the jump off. What a field here. So that's like a whole new class. <laughs> it's like starting over yeah. again. Just going into a time first round class. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things about the way we did this today, um, half of them showed in the afternoon, the other half of them showed at night. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of a different feel. We're not outside, so you don't have to deal with lighting issues or weather issues or anything like that, you know, when you're showing at different times of the day. But you do have to think about the fact that if you showed earlier today and then you had, you know, an hour or an hour and a half off uh, before we got back underway here, I mean, what does that do to your horse when you're, uh, trying to stay ready for a jump off. I think it depends on the horse. I think some horses would benefit from a nice rest, um, and some would be better just to go right back in for the jump off. So I think that's really horse specific. I would agree. And uh, Spruce Meadows does this often, where yeah. they will start part Two of the phases. class. Yeah. Yes. And we've had this before, you know, at events like Washington. Um, you know, we've had a few of these that are split. They're usually in the open jumpers, which means that the riders have probably had a little more experience with that type of thing. But I think it's the first time we've done it here, at least since we've come to Kentucky at the National Horse Show. Brings into play a lot of management skills yes. and understanding of your horse. That's the last. It is a total of 16. It's oh, there was some trouble there. What do you think? Uh, what do all of you think took place there, Angela? Obviously, we had the, the stop, knockdowns, etc. Yeah, that, that horse just didn't want to leave the in-gate. Um, he wanted to go back to the barn. So perhaps that's an issue with having shown earlier in the day and thinking he was finished and getting put to bed for the night, getting brought back out for the jump off. He wanted to go back to the barn. Exactly. And there you see coming up on the tobacco jump. That obviously is a symbolic of one of the signature industries here in Kentucky. But that rail came down. Yeah, so, so the horses themselves are kind of saying, hey, what's going on here? This isn't the way we do this. Jennifer Gates is up. Now she's coming up out of California with Lord Levisto. Interestingly enough, uh, she trains with Harden Tal, who I remember uh, – before he even really was riding, he was kind of messing around a little bit in the short stirrups and just making trouble at the horse shows. But he's really come up to be a great trainer and uh, doing great things out there on the West Coast with Jennifer Gates. Jennifer is really coming along. She also uh, traveled out to Los Angeles and rode in the Two Star Masters out there and uh, did yeah, a great job. That was a big boon for California, having that event come there uh, uh, yes. last month, huh? Fabulous event. And there she goes. How about it for a flawless ride by Jennifer with Lord Levisto? Touch going into that final double. Jennifer Gates, another good round from her with uh, Lord Levisto. Give us the uh, first of the zero scores. Okay. I think one of the tougher uh, turns in this jump off is the turn the past the gate, so good the tobacco jump. Even her horse slowed quite a bit, and she had to she was a different distance i think she wanted one one less stride out of the corner and ended up fitting one in and i think that was just because her horse got behind her leg as he went past that engate and kelly smith the third of those forwards of the 16 the smithfield farms captain chris So now we've got a uh, clear score to beat there that just came in from uh, Jennifer Gates. So if you're looking for the money tonight, uh, you got to beat her time that just came in there. And I definitely think that that, that time is beatable without being reckless. Again, the horses just aren't coming forward away from the gate at that jump. They're losing a lot of time there. As you look down at the bottom, last last night was a false converted, which is a speed class. And at the bottom here, the, the last few riders that you'll see, see come in are very used to going very mm -hmm. fast. The last drops away, giving a total of eight faults in all two down on course. That horse didn't, just didn't look like he, I didn't Kelly see him Smith jump earlier, but obviously he, he jumped well, he was clear. He didn't come out tonight looking clear like he was uh, the way the awake and so willing to play. But you saw so her give him a tap with her, with her stick to wake him up on the way to the first jump, and I think she just was feeling right from the beginning that now the turn of, uh, he didn't have a lot of energy left for tonight's jump off. 
Chestnut Farms, Super Socks, next one to chase. Pressure's on again. That's one of those ones, Brian, that probably would have benefited from jumping off right away. Right, just what they were uh, potentially used to there. They weren't used to the, the time off, and so that unfortunately came into play there. Super Sox, Lily Keenan up next now. Lily Keenan, fantastic young rider. Uh, she also was on the U25 tour this summer. The horse that she's riding tonight is a young horse, actually. They bought him while they were in Europe on that tour. And uh, I don't expect that she is going to go full out as she can. She's giving him a good, secure ride. Wow. <laughs> Amazing jump. So she's only had him for a few months. I'm very impressed with how he's coming along. That Good round from ride. Lily Keenan goes into the lead, 39-61, shaves a little more off the time. Super socks, super abs. But I agree with you, Diane. I don't think she, she used up everything for tonight's jump off. No, she has bigger plans. Yeah. Uh, I think calculated ride. That's right, very calculated. She didn't take any big risks, but she was fast. The track was very yes. efficient. I, I mentioned the, the word composed earlier on with Michael Hughes. Um, so Lily Keenan also extremely also. composed. Very. And a, a rider who's had wins from the time she was in the Pony Hunters, Jumpers, Equitation, the Junior Hunters. She's been champion. Uh, she actually was a winner in the Hunter Derby Championships here against the world's best yes. professionals. Grand Prix wins. Uh, gold medals at the at the North American Championships, so she's definitely one to watch as well. Catherine Strauss is here now, trying to beat 39.61 if she wants to win tonight aboard All In. And I believe Catherine just turned 16 not long ago. So she has many years to look many to many this years division. There are so many very, very nice horses, not only in this division, but also in the junior amateur class that I saw jump earlier today. Right. Very quick, very good rounds, and into the lead by some way. 35, 89, going clear, Catherine Strauss, and all in, certainly are all that, as they go to the top of the leaderboard. 35, 89, taking, well, nearly four seconds off the time up to that stage. Very good one from Catherine Strauss. Leads the way, going a little further down the order, and it's uh, Nicole Bellissimo next. Bellissimo at LLC's BDL Alpha. Pace just quickened there with uh, Catherine Strauss, 35.890. Nicole Bellissimo and VDL Belfleur now on course. They're about halfway through the route. Very good try goes into second place, 36-68. Nicole Bellissimo and VDL Belfer go into second. Catherine Strauss leads the way, 35-89. They're getting quicker and quicker. They are indeed getting quicker and quicker, and you can uh, see with the effort that was uh, just heard in how fast that leading round was by Catherine Strauss. She had taken nearly four seconds off previous lead, and now everybody is chasing that time. Absolutely. Let pressure goes on now, and it's uh, Hunter Holloway next. Still some way to go. It is the Hayes Investment Corporation's YOLO. Hunter Holloway. Hunter Holloway is another 16-year-old 
She traveled to Hagen this year with the Young Rider team. She's won a great deal during the indoors this fall. Another beautiful rider, great style. Like Victoria Colvin, she crosses over into the hunters and does a beautiful job on the hunters as well as her jumpers. This horse has a huge stride. Yes. You see she did the six from one to two, and it was so easy for her, whereas a lot of the horses are really having to gallop. Oh, it's too bad. That's too bad. Last goes as well, puts them in fifth place so far on a total of 8.37.05. Hunter Holloway and Yolo finish on the eighth false. Trying all the way, very good try. I think to open up to, to such a big gallop to that green oxer and then also try to fit the inside turn uh, is, is a bit risky. I think it you is, either have it to is. gallop and slip around, which of course yeah, for some horses could be faster. Uh, or be able to just half halt a little, have a slower green officer to get inside. Hunter uh, has been working with Ann Krasinski, uh, working on just those issues of being able to open and shorten. Mm -hmm. And I think that she was wanting to try it out. I think so too. I'm, I'm proud of her for trying it. And we, uh, we actually talked to Ann Krasinski earlier today. It's kind of interesting the way the classes unfold here. Uh, they have a, we have a, an under 25 class. Riders are trying to reach a certain level, get identified at that level, and then maybe rise to the level of international jumpers. Um, and we're going to actually have one of those international classes coming up later on here in the open. And we may actually have uh, Ann, who's had vast experience yes, internationally, uh, talk to us a little bit during that session. So this is a totally different type. This horse has a, a smaller stride but it's also very, very quick. And sometimes these horses that have a, a more uphill gallop um, can be just as fast, but also lead the jumps up a little bit more often. Another she did seven from one to two, for example, place, but as you can see, she was still fast enough into second, third place. And Kate Doree gets herself up in the top few and valuable points for the championship. Elise Oaken into third place. Nicole Bellissimo in second, and uh, Catherine Strauss still leads the way, 35-89. Catherine Strauss just blazing there with all in, 35-8-9-0, her time to beat. With John Wolfs, We're about end. halfway through the list of riders here for the jump off at this point. Catherine Strauss setting a very good time in this. The question is, do they chase it, or they go for position at those valuable points in the championship? It'll be interesting to see what Ali does because she is quite a seasoned rider to be in this class. This is her last year uh, that she can ride in this uh, division. You see how she set up the six by angling number one from left to right. Super job on that turn back. Yes. That's where you see the difference in the experience. Right. Allie's jumped a lot of jump offs and had a lot of pressure right. on her. As you saw, Hunter Holloway, she is just turning 16. And here we have a rider that is aging out of this division. Beautiful job at the Green Oxer to get the inside turn. Wow, that was fantastic. Good round goes into the top three, 36.89 from Ali Wolf and Brianda. And third place would be a valuable 27 points. And remember, as we go further down the jump off order, these are the guys that got very good points yesterday. And I think Ali will be really happy because she's into third place. She was fast, she was efficient, she left the jumps up, but she also didn't take much risk. I think she still has lots of horse left for, t for the, the next phase. I agree. Phase. She's a very accurate rider and very smart rider. Absolutely. She definitely had a plan and, and stuck to it. 
So uh, top three now, Catherine Strauss, Nicole Bellissimo and uh, Ali Wolf at the moment make up the top three. The turn of Lucas Porter now with the Sleepy P Ranches, Mills, Georgia. Interesting little dynamic shaping up here when we've got Lucas Porter and Wilton Porter both in the jump offs. So there's right. a little inter-household <laughs> rivalry happening. They weren't competing against each other when they were here for the, the North American Championships this summer because Lucas is in the junior ranks, Wilton's in the young rider ranks. So they were happy to see each other do well there because <laughs> um, they were kind of carrying the family title into that gold medal position. But tonight, they got a battle, battle for uh, who's the best brother. Come up out of Bartonville, Texas. Fortunately, the brothers are very supportive of each other. And the entire family is very supportive of their sport. This horse certainly doesn't waste any time in the air, and his choice of track is very efficient. Around the course and up and over the fence is too very, very efficient there, huh? Yeah, I think that was too bad. I think I think the Ingate caught up with him a little bit. I also think he had a little bit too much gallop to be able to turn back. And he wanted, you can see here, he wanted one less. He did. And then that would have given his horse a little bit more room for that front end to get up. Five left to go in the jump on Catherine Strauss. It's a hard turn to make with so much speed. Ali Wolf in third. Set a very good time of 35. 89. The pressure goes on these last few, Ken, because uh, in here they've all got a lot of points from yesterday. Yes, they do, carrying it in, and they know the pressure that Catherine uh, is put on them with her fast, fast time and staying clear. So they have their work cut out for them. They've got the experience behind them to do it, and we'll see what happens. Turn of Calvin Dobbs next. Calvin uh, picking up 22 points yesterday. The Treesdale Farms ride of Woodstock. No. You know, this is my first experience with this format and, and actually watching this under 25. Uh -huh. um, and I think one of the biggest things I'm realizing that's so important for these riders is that difference in strategy, like we were just talking about. Because I think besides the young riders uh, championships, at least f from uh, a Canadian rider perspective, there's nowhere else that you have this sort of World Cup final format where you don't just get in there and run as fast as you can go for every jump off, which often we see in the juniors and the amateurs, uh, there's, there's got to be strategy and a plan and management involved, which I think is standing out as a, a huge um, plus. Yeah, and the thing about the Young Rider, North American Junior Young Rider Championships is you don't really have prize money for each of the rounds either. Right, right. So there's kind of a dichotomy going on in your, in your mind. How about that, though? Calvin Dobbs doesn't have any dichotomy. He's got a new lead, 34 and 35, here with Woodstock. Oh, nicely done. That was exciting. And that horse is no stranger to going fast. Uh, I believe that horse was previously ridden by Laura Kraut. And, and won a lot of very, very fast jump offs. A couple I can remember from the Royal Winter Fair in Toronto, actually. Yeah. At the moment, coming into our final four, and it's Sean Casty now. Sean with the Calvario Farms Twister. You know, I think, especially I noticed with Sean's horse, I think not only is that a tough turn back because they're going past the gate, I think the horses are all looking at that Liverpool because in, in the opening round, that Liverpool was uh, number three. Right. So they're now going so they're one, two, and then making the turn and uh, expecting to go yeah, to the Liverpool. Yeah, Sean's horse didn't even have his eye uh, on the turn, let alone that tobacco jump. That was too bad. That was really too bad. Finishing with just one fence down, 39.51. Goes top 10 into ninth base for Sean Casty and Twister again can pick up valuable points. 
And I think he really felt that pressure from that lickety split round by uh, Calvin Dobbs, really trying to eat up the course and make some time. And it did. Yeah, you see, he had his outside it leg on. Sean knew exactly what he wanted, and you can just see that his horse, at the very the last minute, took his eye away from the Liverpool and, and looked at the go. jump. Calvin Dobbs leads the way with Woodstock O on 34 35. Do they challenge him or do they go for position? This uh, format has also allowed uh, riders that are assistant riders to our senior riders to have a place to go with their horses. And I think that is also opening up a whole new group of people. Because they can be professionals. That's right. Right. See that. So you, oh, you can see right from the start that she, Maggie was having a hard time turning this one. Well, it was a short sure route. And uh, she's now eliminated for jumping the old number three or the Liverpool backwards. And you know, Gatsby was impressed by that jump, as you would imagine, because that Liverpool's way out in front of a very big, very airy vertical. Um, it's a shame that wasn't in the first round or in the, in the round because that would have been a fantastic jump if it was supposed to happen. And it's it is too bad because it ends up being very costly. Well, it does. Uh, you could look at it and think, wow, you know, that was pretty cool. And, you know, you can hear a bunch of her friends and uh, fellow riders clapping because doesn't happen very often that you see that again, something our, like that but for tonight and for this format it, it actually ends up being very costly because now she she has a elimination She's in a, yes she is at a serious disadvantage I think this is a rider that will also have a very calculated plan for the jump off And because he's such an efficient rider and his, his horse is so adjustable, I think that he can be quite quick and not sacrifice anything for the next phase. I, I think he's looking for that clear round and a nice time. I think he had one of the most direct tracks uh, to number eight. And certainly he's the fastest to the Sleepy P vertical so far. All right. A little bit of Over luck, but beautifully done. Second place, 3506 for Michael Hughes and MacArthur puts him in a very, very strong position. He's got to be, uh, got to be happy with that. I mean, yes. you know, not the winning position here tonight, but again, you're looking for consistency throughout three rounds. You're looking to get to the third round to begin with, but then to stay. Uh, consistent throughout. So now he's in the runner-up spot, which means he's going to get a nice check. And then uh, he's still uh, very, very much within reach of a win if he can maintain through Saturday. And I have to say, I didn't think Catherine looked that fast. She was fast, but watching Michael, I thought that he would he would slide in front of her. Well, Calvin I, Dobbs, of yeah. course, was, uh, was blazing. Absolutely. It was blazing. And uh, I thought Michael never really pressured his horse as i can seen him be able to ride for speed. Sometimes it's just amazing uh, how fast he can go and still make everything absolutely accurate. Oh, my God. So again, that, that turn, um, Wilton did want one less stride, and I think the horse's hind end just hadn't quite caught up to the front end. The horse wasn't quite knowing where he was going. You can see what he wanted. But it does mean congratulations to Calvin Dobbs and Woodstock a class round to finish in top position. I don't really think that that was actually rider error watching the replay it, it looked like he was there well for sure wilton never goes in a defensive mode he is always Absolutely. going for it yeah.